everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're just letting people load in before we get started with our presentation. All right, so we're going to go ahead and I'll start talking about what we're going to be presenting on today. My name is Michael Aguilar. I'm the Outreach and User Engagement Librarian. I'm joined by a few of my colleagues today, Adriana Poe, Krista Bailey, and Sharon Thompson will be joining us in a second, all from the SJSU King Library. And I want to start off, I should have started first when I, um, by, by congratulating all of you on your admission to San Jose State. It's a big accomplishment. Um, give a quick round of applause for everyone. Yeah, this is, we did two of these. This is our last session today, April 22nd, obviously. Um, we did two, just in case you weren't able to join us on the first one. And some quick housekeeping notes. We have live captioning available. Just click the closed caption option within Zoom. And we are also recording this event. So you should have received a notification when you joined, um, just confirming that you were, that you're good with us recording. And we will be presenting for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then we're leaving the second half really to answer any questions that you have, some time to really engage with you. And if you have a question, feel free to drop it in the Q&A section within Zoom. That can be either at the end, or if you think of something while we're presenting, feel free to drop it in there during that time as well. And you can please address it to all attendees when you submit your question. And you have the option to send it anonymously if, if you wish to. And we are located in the corner of campus, um, right in the heart of downtown San Jose. And we actually share the building with the San Jose Public Library. So it's, it's a unique collaboration. It's the only such collaboration this side of the Mississippi. And it, um, it allows your library to really um, expand the number of services that we offer to students. Um, you have access to everything that San Jose State um, provides access to, whether that's articles, books, journals, et cetera, in addition to having the public library right there with all of their resources as well. And I included this because I wanted to say that um, while we aren't in person right now, we are all operating, or we're generally, for the, largest, for the large part, operating remotely, we are still here to answer questions about research and library resources. And that's why I wanted to include this picture right here. We still have a number of ways you can quote unquote ask a librarian about how you can get support with research and uh, different resources we have. We have a number of librarians um, all in different areas. You can get in touch with them through email, through Zoom, through chat. We've, we've transitioned a number of our services to keep supporting students during remote learning. And one of those um, one of those modes is chat, as I mentioned. You can do this through our library website. We've um, we're all all of the librarians are on chat. In addition to some staff, it isn't um, a bot that you're interacting with. You're actually interacting with librarians uh, during normal business hours. We do have a chat bot that operates after hours, but you're for the most part interacting directly with librarians that are there to support you. And we, we have access to over 400 databases to support research. These um, cover a number of areas. And I think one of the cool things about the San Jose King Library is that our electronic resources actually outnumber our physical resources. And we were kind of prepared to meet the needs of remote learning in that we had been working towards this for a while, just given that the number of digital interactions that take place, we had been increasing steadily increasing the number of electronic resources we hold. And as I mentioned, there are a number of librarians. There is a librarian dedicated to each department on campus, uh, a liaison librarian, and we manage libguides. Each of them manages the libguide associated with that department or that area. And this is an example for art and art history. We have a librarian who will update this libguide, including resources, different areas of study, um, books, articles, all sorts of stuff that would help support students in that department. As, as I said, we have one for each, whatever your major is, there, there will be a libguide associated with that to support you while you're here. 
We also have the Africana, Asian American, Chicano, and Native American Studies Center. This area of our library is dedicated to um, resources on these four distinct ethnic uh, collections. And this picture is from an event we had on Dia de los Muertos a couple of years ago, which we obviously can't do right now, but we have transitioned that in a bit. And I'll show you a video of that in, a, in just a moment. We also have student computing services, which provides a number of technology loans from laptops to hotspots to cameras. This is still continuing. We <clears throat> just have a different process on how we check these items out, but it's really to support remote learning. It will, student computing services is to support learning in general, students who don't have access to, these, um, to this equipment, but we've continued this service during the pandemic to meet the needs to meet, to meet the needs of remote learning as well. So you can still check out those hotspots, laptops, other technology equipment. And within that, we have the Clever Lab, which is a virtual reality um, sent, uh, lab, really, to help introduce students to virtual reality. One of the goals of student computing services is to really break down those barriers that exist as far as entry to technology fields to demonstrate to students that anyone can engage with this type of work, anyone can engage with these types of technologies. This is something we've transitioned in a way. We obviously haven't been able to keep it fully operating in person as it, as it was, but we have transitioned that into virtual reality exhibitions. And one, the one on the left is Spartan Quest, which is a map we created. It's a virtual reality map that we created with our technology labs coordinator. And you can actually explore different landmarks on campus that are associated with important social rights, movement, so, social justice movements. And on the right is a quick video that kind of combines those two, the virtual reality environments and the Dia de los Muertos exhibit that I showed a picture of earlier. And here's what we, we created with, for this year. We had students submit materials and then our technology labs coordinator update or uploaded all of those, transposed them onto different um, altars. And then each one had an associated recording with it as well. So you could hear the story behind that image that they submitted. And that hummingbird you see kind of guides you around the, the virtual reality exhibition. And we also have a sound studio. Um, it's a soundproof um, area where you can record podcasts all sorts of stuff. And we have a materials library, which has access to, I believe, over 500 different types of materials from glass to ceramic and metals. And we have our presentation room, which is exactly what it is. And these are in-person services. I should have said that uh, going back to the sound studio, we haven't transitioned this one into a, a, a remote learning, but I wanted you all to be aware of it for when we do return to, to in-campus operations. And the same with the materials library and with the presentation room. So this can be used for you know, practice pitches, um, for coursework or even outside of coursework, anything where you really need a dedicated space to practice any type of presentation, it can be used for. And then of course, we also generally have study space. Um, just as any, any other library. And we're figuring out what this will look like in the fall, but during normal in-person operations, we have plenty of place for students to study, plenty of areas for students to study. And I wanted to include a quick comment on our special collections and archives, um, because this is an area that I feel undergraduates aren't encouraged enough to engage with, um, but it is fully available to all undergraduates, graduates and faculty. Uh, and um, we transition a number of these services as well to digital and online collections. We also have a project going on right now. Our university archivist is leading a project called Spartan Speak on COVID-19. It's documenting the, experience, the experiences of students during the pandemic to make sure we don't lose those stories. And we also have an upcoming exhibit titled Survival Mode, SJSU Response to Historic Crises. And that exhibit, also led by our university archivist, will explore um, different, I'm, I'm sure I'm not explaining this right, um, but different approaches 
the university has taken, right, different approaches we've taken in the San Jose State area uh, as it's reflected in our collection. And we also have, the library also houses the Writing Center and they've transitioned a lot of their services online as well. I'm, I'm, I know I'm covering a lot of resources right now and hopefully we'll be able to drop some links if, if y'all are interested. And, um, but they have, they have a number of resources. They do um, Zoom sessions where they can help you out with your writing, any, any way they can support with your research or writing to kind of combined right here. We're gonna come back to our Student Technology Training Center because I'm waiting for one of my colleagues to arrive for that. But we will go ahead and talk about affordable learning solutions and that'll be from a colleague, fellow librarian, Krista Bailey. Gonna talk about that a bit. Yes, thank you so much. Good afternoon, future Spartans. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our Affordable Learning Solutions Initiative, which I co-coordinate with my colleague, Adriana, who's here as well today. So we just wanna point out, make you aware of a few things to uh, you know, look out for when you, it's time to register for your classes. Be sure to check the course catalog for that zero designation symbol that you see on your screen we've highlighted. This symbol will indicate this course does not have a textbook cost associated with it. And also there's some things you definitely wanna take advantage from the library. So we do have an e-textbook list, which is available at the link you see on your screen, library.sjsu.edu slash e-textbooks. Each semester, we obtain a list of materials available from the bookstore, and then we match that to the holdings that we have in our e-textbook collection. So, or rather, I should say our e-book collection. So these are materials that your faculty have assigned to you, and we look to see if we have a match. If so, we go ahead and add those materials to the e-textbook list, which means that you can gain access to this material for free for the entire semester. And you generally don't have to worry about other people checking it out or something like that. So this is a really great way to save you some money. So before you go to the bookstore and buy those textbooks, I would highly encourage you to double check and see if your materials aren't included in our e-textbook list. Also, you would wanna use the library catalog, otherwise known as library one search. It's really hard to miss on the library homepage. It's a big, it's kind of what I like to term the Google tool of the library. It searches through all of our collections. That's another way to see if you have access to the materials you need through the library. And then finally, we do have course reserves, which are traditionally print materials. So as we're transitioning throughout this pandemic and hopefully we'll be back on campus or anticipating being back on campus in the fall, you could um, check and see if there's materials that we have in the print collection that you could then check out for your courses. Now these course reserve materials, they typically uh, circulate for a short duration Generally, these are established by your faculty. So usually like two hour checkout or 24 hours, but we do have um, scanners in the library. So if you wanted to scan these materials, you could go ahead and do that. So that's just a couple ways here that I've highlighted that the library can help you bring down the cost of your course materials. And then of course, you do wanna check online for any book rentals or used books. We do have a list that you can use, again, at our library website for our Affordable Learning Solutions um, program, which is library.sjsu.edu slash ALS. And thank you so much to Mariah. She's dropping these links into the chat right now as I'm speaking. So you don't have to memorize any of this. You can just follow along and chat and grab those. Also, I would encourage you to check out our uh, Don't Go Textbook Broke events, typically you know, marked with the hashtag, Don't Go Textbook Broke. So we do have student ambassadors in our program and they coordinate these events. Uh, generally, we start them at weeks of welcome at the start of each semester. And we will work with our fellow librarians to hold office hours and we can assist you in finding your uh, alternatives to textbooks. Sometimes you, know, you aren't really sure if the library has your textbook. That's a great time to bring your syllabus to one of our events and talk with one of us and we can check the catalog and the holdings for you to see if we have access to that so you don't have to buy that material. And then I just wanna point out that our program has saved students an estimated more than $2.3 million since the inception, which was back in 2012. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully working with all of you in the future and please come and track down Adriana or myself to ask any questions you have, we would be more than happy to help you, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Krista. 
and yeah, it's a uh, very cool program that Chris and Adriana are work on saving students so much money, um, just given the price of textbooks. And Sharon Thompson just joined us. Sharon, would, um, uh, who is our Student Technology Training Center coordinator. Um, Sharon, if you want to talk about your area. Advanced show. Okay. Sorry about that. I had a class um, for a grant project and tons of questions. So I apologize for coming in late. And no, so um, I am in charge of our Student Technology Training Service Center where we have multiple areas um, underneath the Technology Training Center. So we offer workshops for students and staff and faculty also can attend those workshops. We have student to student workshops where our students are taking the, um, the lead and they're just getting in there and teaching students about different types of technologies. We have a different series every semester. And we have our prototype um, library. Right now, we're not doing anything because of the um, shutdown, but we will be running, coming back on full force once we get back in the building. And we are doing some small little 3D printing for projects that the professors are having the students. We do offer the Adobe certification. It is not free. That's something that the student have to pay for it. But what we do is we provide a spot for the students to take those exams and everything. And then last, but not last but not least, but we have our late night tutoring. So our late night tutoring is on certain subjects from math, math eight, all the way up to math 71, um, chemistry 1A, 1B, 30A, 30B. We have physics 50, um, biology 10, and we also are adding right now, um, biology 65 for the next semester because we found that that is a need. And we also offer another service, which is our SPSS consultation. So we have an SPS expert in the building, and we find that it's not just the students that's using it and the science students, but also um, some of the faculty members are using that service. So if they're working on it, um, some reports or some research and everything, that is very heavily used for the students, for people to have access to. So our Student Technology Training Center is trying to accomplish everything to help the students all as one and try to give them a little bit of a little bit of everything. So then that way they feel like they're getting that extra help that they need. Um, so any questions on that? Okay, thank you, Mariah, for putting that up. So the examples of those workshops is Adobe Suite, iMovie, Microsoft Office, SPSS, and also um, Adobe Creative Suite. So we just I recently have a grant where I'm working with a professor on campus. And what it is, is we embedded our course of the Adobe software technology training portion into a course where that we meet with the students like every couple of weeks. And um, they are working on a project. So the couple of weeks is when we're meeting in person. The other times we're helping the students all semester long. So at the end of the semester, instead of them doing a final um, where they have to come in and you know the regular answering or writing a paper and everything, the students are coming up with digital stories and some projects as their final project. Any thank questions? you, Sharon. Yeah, I want to thank everyone again for joining us today, allowing us to talk about the library and how we can help you if you if you choose help help your academic success if you choose San Jose State. And um, thank you, Krista, Adriana, Sharon, and Mariah again. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, Thanks we look so forward much, to seeing everyone. you on campus when when <laughs> when it's safe. When it's safe, yeah. yes. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye.